Imagine navigating a world where survival wasn't just a challenge, but rather a pretty relentless test of wits against well-equipped predators and unforgiving environment. Our early ancestors, the Australopithecus, didn't have to imagine all this, as every step they took on ancient African soil meant the potential encounters with beasts like lion-sized otters, saber-toothed cats, and bone-crushing hyenas. These weren't just passing threats, these were apex predators competing for the same resources as our hominin brethren. How did our ancestors adapt and evolve in the face of such terrifying odds? Between four and two million years ago, these prehistoric forebears roamed the planet. This epoch is referred to as the Pliocene to early Pleistocene. Their fossils, which have mostly been found in eastern and southern Africa, provide important information about the evolutionary processes that ultimately resulted in modern humans. Australopithecus is best known for its bipedalism. This is a defining characteristic that separates it from earlier, more ape-like ancestors. The skeletal structure of Australopithecines included a human-like pelvis and leg bones. These features indicated that they were well adapted to walking on two legs, though not as efficiently as we do today. Their body size was relatively small, with males standing around 4.5 to 5 feet tall. The females were even shorter, as they measured between 3.5 to 4 feet. Brain size was modest by modern standards, ranging from 400 to 500 cubic centimeters. Facial features were also pretty distinct, as they had a projecting face, flat nose, and a pronounced brow ridge. The fossil remains suggest that they also had some very strong jaws. This indicates that their diet included hard food, or food with lots of fiber. The most well-known of this genus is probably the Australopithecus afarensis. The skeleton of Lucy that was found in Ethiopia belonged to this genus, who lived between 3.9 to 2.9 million years ago. Then there were the Australopithecus africanus, that lived in South Africa between 3 and 2 million years ago. This type had a slightly larger brain, and it's also possible that they may have used simple tools as well. Australopithecus anamensis is another notable species that can be found in Ethiopia and Kenya. Australopithecus sediba is a more recent discovery though, and it's estimated to have lived approximately 2 million years ago. Australopithecines most likely had an omnivorous diet consisting of fruits, nuts, seeds, roots. Besides that, they could also have preyed on small animals such as birds or rodents. According to an analysis of their jaws and teeth, they were able to survive a variety of environments. Their social behavior is less clear, but researchers believe that it's likely the Australopithecines lived in small, family-like groups, just like modern primates. They would have relied on both trees and the ground for safety and sustenance. Their habitats varied from woodlands to savannas to more open areas, which showed how adaptable they were. These ancestors had primitive traits, such as a small brain and adaptations for climbing. But at the same time, they had more advanced traits like bipedalism and smaller canines. This is a clear highlight of the complexity of human evolution. These early hominins set the stage for the rise of Homo, leading to species with larger brains and a greater capacity for tool use. But our ancestors shared their habitats with a variety of different creatures. Among these hominins, a surprising and formidable predator stalked the land. And this may come as a surprise, but you can imagine a gigantic otter to fill the blanks. This otter was known as Anhydriodon amoensis. It shared the region with early bipedal hominins, giving us a unique look into the ecosystem where human evolution unfolded. Anhydriodon amoensis was a giant compared to today's otters, weighing in at over 200 kilograms. This is almost the size of a modern lion. Unlike the small, sleek otters of our time, they are adapted for life in water. This prehistoric otter was a dominant land-based predator. Its presence in the same environment as Australopithecus raises intriguing questions about the interactions and challenges faced by our ancient relatives. Living alongside Australopithecus afarensis, including the famous Lucy and other early hominins, this giant otter shared the African landscape during a crucial period of evolutionary development. This extraordinary otter differed from its modern descendants, not just in size, but also in behavior and diet. According to fossil evidence found in its teeth, E. amoensis hunted or scavenged for territorial prey for the majority of its life. 
Its diet was surprisingly similar to that of land-based carnivores, according to the isotopic analysis of its tooth enamel. It demonstrates that they consumed a wide range of creatures, from the wooded and savanna areas. This territorial lifestyle set it apart from other members of the Anhydridin genus, which were thought to have semi-aquatic habits, preying on mollusks, fish, and small aquatic animals. The simultaneous presence of Australopithecus and E. homoensis highlights a diverse and competitive ecosystem. Australopithecus, with its bipedal gait and evolving intelligence, was adapting to the challenges of this environment, from foraging for plants to possibly using simple tools for survival. Meanwhile, E. homoensis would have been a formidable competitor, preying on both territorial and aquatic animals. This giant otter's coexistence with early hominins suggests a landscape teeming with competition, where both predator and prey needed to adapt to survive. Australopithecus would encounter even more creatures of the era as they roamed the forests, savannas, and woodlands of ancient Africa. With a wide variety of animals, their world was a dynamic and perilous environment that vividly depicted the early Pliocene and Pleistocene. Each step Australopithecus took could lead them into encounters with creatures now long extinct, whose presence shaped the way early hominins lived and evolved. These animals ranged from being fearsome to relatively friendly and were as much part of the story of human evolution as Australopithecus themselves. One of the most dangerous predators of this time period was the Dinophilus. This animal weighed between 200 and 300 pounds and stood about 2.5 feet at the shoulder. This big cat is frequently referred to as the false saber-toothed cat. Dinophilus's canine teeth were shorter than those of a saber-toothed cat, but they were still incredibly strong and thick. The predator used these teeth to crush the necks of its prey. Australopithecus, standing around four feet tall, would have been dwarfed by this predator, and their interactions with Dinophilus likely revolved around evasion and survival. Dinophilus was a versatile hunter, preying on herbivores like antelope ancestors, juvenile megafauna, and potentially even Australopithecus themselves, if desperate. Its ambush strategy is thought to have involved lying in wait within the dense underbush or using the cover of trees, relying on a burst of speed to overtake its target. Much like the big cats of today, our ancestors had to become acutely aware of their surroundings because even the slightest change in their environments could spell the difference between life and death if failed to recognize it. The giant hyena, known as Pachycrocuta bravirostris, was another predator that coexisted with Australopithecus in Africa. This species was the largest hyena ever to live, as it stood at almost three feet tall at the shoulder and weighed more than 250 pounds. Pachycrocuta was a specialized scavenger with a short snout full of strong muscles and a stocky build. The harsh conditions of the Pliocene could support these animals. It could crush bones with its impressive bite force, which allowed it to eat nutrient-rich marrow that other predators couldn't get to and critically wound its prey. Pachycrocuta likely trailed other predators, like Dinophilus or large cat, waiting for the opportunity to snatch a meal from the remains of a kill. This bone-crushing beast would have been a source of both competition and danger for Australopithecus, who must have relied on scavenging for protein-rich meat to supplement their plant-based diet. An encounter with a Pachycrocuta would have been a tense standoff, with early hominins needing to back away slowly from the scavenger's claim. The roars and cackles of these giant hyenas could have echoed through the grasslands, signaling to Australopithecus that a fresh kill was nearby, and also that danger was imminent. Not all encounters in the African landscape were with predators, though. An ancestor of the modern elephants existed at the time, which was the straight-tusked elephant, Paleoloxodon. These animals had long, straight tusks that could reach a length of more than 10 feet and their shoulder length could be around 13 feet. These elephants grazed on grasses, leaves, bark, and other vegetation while roaming in herds. With the exception of the occasional ambush by a group of large carnivores, they had few predators to be afraid of due to their sheer size. An unwary onlooker could be easily trampled by a charging elephant protecting its young or responding to perceived threats, and it's obvious that this must have been the case back then as well. As the herds followed the seasonal rains and the emergence of new vegetation, the herbivore's slow and steady movements served as a reminder of the prehistoric cycles of life. In the shadowy depths of Africa's forested regions, another predator ruled. The smaller but deadly Megantorion was built for ambush, with strong limbs and retractable claws perfect for climbing and holding on to its prey. Its most distinctive features were its elongated, flattened canines. While shorter than the saber teeth of later cats, 
These canines were just as effective for slicing through flesh. Australopithecus often ventured into these dense areas, seeking fruits, nuts, and other resources among the trees. However, every step was a gamble, as Megantorion's stealth and climbing ability made it a master of surprise. A rustling in the undergrowth could trigger a flight response, as early hominins quickly learned to differentiate between harmless forest noises and the silent stalking of a predator. Then there were the ancestors of bovines today. The Macapania is an extinct genus of large caprid, or ovibovine, that lived during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs in southern and east Africa. It is notable for its laterally positioned horns, a feature reminiscent of modern musk oxen and tachins. Weighing approximately 263 kilograms, Macapania was likely both a browser and a grazer, preferring grasses and likely relying on a nearby permanent water source. Fossils of Macapania have been found in various regions shedding light on the fauna that roamed Africa during this period. These grazers would also have diverse encounters with our hominin ancestors, but at this point, it is unlikely that they would be a source of food for the Australopithecus. In this diverse and challenging world, Australopithecus was not merely a passive observer, but an active participant. They adapted and evolved in a landscape that demanded resilience and intelligence. These animals, each with their own unique characteristics, shaped the daily life of early hominins and played a role in the evolutionary path that eventually led to modern humans. The Pliocene and early Pleistocene were ages of experimentation, where nature tested its creations in a constantly changing environment. For Australopithecus, every encounter with the animals of their time was a step towards a deeper understanding of their world, a world that would lay the foundations for humanity itself. If you enjoyed this journey into the past, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more incredible tales of prehistoric life. And if you're hungry for more, stay tuned, there's plenty more to uncover in the fascinating world of ancient animals.